Hi. Uh, so Sally isn't here this week. So, hi, I'm Adrian, and this week we are making Chinese curry uh, with vegetables. So I am going to turn the camera around. Huh? Hello. And Johnny will pretty much take it from here. <laughs> Chinese curry today. We'll go through the ingredients as usual. So, here we have uh, four chicken breasts, all one head of cauliflower, um, and 200 grams of potatoes. So, we'll go over that in a bit more detail. We're not using chicken today. Two large white onions, two garlic cloves, a teaspoon of ground ginger, two teaspoons of madras curry powder, less if you like it milder, more if you like it hotter, a teaspoon of turmeric, teaspoon of five spice. 3 stock tubes, tin of coconut milk, 5 tablespoons of rapeseed oil and 4 tablespoons of plain flour. So ordinarily I go through the whole method first but it is quite long as you can see so we'll take it over to Stevie and um, Stevie's going to be showing you a wee bit about knife skills, how to chop things and I'll just talk you through. So step one we are peeling and chopping the onions into small pieces and um, leave aside same with the garlic, so Stevie's just taking the tails off, chopped it in half. And then we'll be dicing this onion, Stevie will show you how to do that, so it's effectively <coughs> moving along these lines this way, and then the other way. And what Stevie's doing there is called the bridge method with his hands. Where you can see the blade is safe. Because we don't like cuts. <laughs> and Stevie's fancy, so he does it along the way as well. We got five oh, out of the one <laughs> I have never you seen never that, before. that before. No. Uh, so, so, but, this uh, is a uh, professional at work. Uh, that's, a, that's an old school kind of. Uh. You know I'm going to be trying this now. Oh, I definitely. <laughs> Definitely, let's don't cut yourself. <laughs> let's don't cut yourself. But as you can see, with your fingers behind the way Stevie's are, you won't cut yourself. Now the blade's resting on the knuckle hey. of his middle finger. Yes. Hi, son. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> it's all over the first comment. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right, so next vegetable, you can see here we've got some mushrooms. So most of the vegetables that we've got today aren't in the recipe, but that's what we're trying to promote here at Belvo is zero waste, um, really just showing you that you can use pretty much anything. So that's a mushroom. Would that be a dice of mushrooms, Stevie? Yeah. Nice. Mushrooms are really good for you, full of protein. Always add more than you think they're going to need because they're about 70% water and they shrink. So. Right, so next thing we're going to do is cauliflower, broccoli, right from the garden. Some spring onions that were given to us by a local allotment and some small peppers that I had in my house and I couldn't work out what to do with them so I thought <laughs> I'd bring them in. Oh garlic, right yeah. so, uh, did you mince the last lot of garlic yeah, today? Yeah, Right, okay, so this is quite good so, this garlic has been minced not too heavily but that's probably a good thing because if you make it too small it'll burn so, Steve will show you how to do that. Take it away, Stevie, you can tell yeah. him how to. Mm. Just crush it with a knife. Take a wee bit at the, the end there. Mm -hmm. Which is, I don't know why, it just always happens. Um, just chop up a bit. And take a knife. And just like, squish it almost like. Mm. If you're doing this in a house, if you put a wee bit of salt on top, it can act as an abrasive and speed the process up. But, um, We've got plenty of salt in the stock tubes today, so we're trying to keep it nice and healthy, so we won't be using any extra salt. 
There we are. Perfect one on Charlotte. And you've created a country out of the... Yeah. On a mess. And we'll wash my hands. There we are. That looks sticky. So whilst he's washing his hands, we'll look at some of the other ingredients that we've got. So on your recipes it tells you... Uh, let me see. So in here, I've got a teaspoon of ground ginger. And I've got a teaspoon of five spice. I've probably got closer to four teaspoons of turmeric and closer to four teaspoons of madras powder. So that's anybody that's received a box, that's what I've told Charles for. The reason that I've done that is because I like curry spicy. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Hi, Adrian's Dad. <laughs> flour, just plain flour, all purpose flour. Rapeseed oil, because this is the healthiest oil. And this is the best one for you. It's not like other oils, like olive oil, you're not meant to actually cook with it because it, it turns into the bad kind of fat. But this is the best one for you. Here I've got some chilli oil. This is just oil from a jar, and excuse the chilli. It's very hot, but it smells like a Chinese. So, just going in. Oh, and also then, hi, Mum. <laughs> hi, Adrian. <laughs> There's uh, two tins of coconut milk. Your recipe only asks for one, but I'm using two tins to kind of balance out all the spice that I've got in here. So, right, so what we'll go for next, dearie? Um, we're going to show us how to cut Pickles and Ice Peppers. Pickles and Ice Peppers. So, you see that these are wee, wee miniature snack peppers. I think they were called snack peppers. Um, uh, some people use a knife to take the seeds out, but for safer, use a spoon. Seeds. You can put the seeds in actually, I don't think they do any harm do they? Yeah, you can, you can eat the seeds, they're perfectly fine but... Quite spicy though, mm -hmm. seeds. Uh, seeds. Not them ones. Not those ones? No, just the two of these. Not, right. not, not a lot at all, perfectly edible though. Good information. They just look like chillies but they're not. Uh. Make it bigger if you want, but I've kind of small dice. Oh, my dad says he likes the knife. He likes the knife? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, you've got more of them there. Oh, that's nice. So Stevie's putting the food waste into the food waste bin so that we can stop it going to the landfill. While Stevie's going to down peppers, um, I wanted to talk a wee bit about nutritional information. So um, tryptophan is a big thing. So it's a protein that's found in chicken, found in meats in quite high levels, but it can be found in vegetables. So Brassicas are very high tryptophan levels, so things that flour, basically as a flour, lots of this. So on its own it's just a protein, it doesn't do much, but when eating with carbohydrates it does a lot. So basically what happens is when you eat carbohydrates it reduces insulin in the body and that allows the tryptophan more easily to break the blood brain barrier. And once it's in your body and it's processed it results in serotonin, which is a happy plan. So basically what we're saying is if you eat rice and chicken together or if you eat rice and brassicas together it will make you happy. It will release happy hormones in your brain. And I would imagine any carbohydrate or any food high in carbohydrates so you know pastas so if you were to eat like a chicken, a chicken pasta that would do the same thing. So yeah the combination of carbohydrate high foods and foods that are high in protein. Makes you happy to try it. Right, so Steve will show you how to do some cauliflower and broccoli now. Florentin would be yeah. the technical term. Yeah, just, just cut into the stalks. Yep. Aye. 
and um, that piece there, although it's very woody and you would think it's not edible, if you're making a broccoli soup, just slice it down, slice it along, slice it as small as you can get it, it will break down. It takes a long time, but if you eat this, it's edible, you can eat this as well. Is that the same for the cauliflower? Um, I think so, but I've never tried it. Um, it's a good question, Adrian, actually. Let's, uh, it looks even woodier. That's the only thing it looks like. Mm. But, it, but it might, I mean, you know, we'll need to try it. Next time I've got a lot of cauliflowers, I'll eat the stocks. I'll eat the stocks. We also have some lovely wee baby potatoes from my garden. So we've just washed these in half the small ones, quarter of the big ones. So when we're cooking the curry, these will go in first because they take longer to cook. We could parboil them. We've decided not to today. So they'll also help to thicken the curry because they're starchy, which is another good reason to put potato on curry. That's pretty much it. Um, the only other things that I wanted to go through before we start actually cooking. These here, anybody guess what these are? They are the leaves from the broccoli, which are also perfectly edible as well. So we'll get Stevie to chop them up. Probably put these in right towards the end, because they'll cook quickest. Carrigan, from the garden, nice herb. Lots of health benefits. Um, it's quite good at making things sweeter, and it's got quite a licorice kind of aniseedy fragrance and taste. So quite powerful. So you don't want too much, but let's do the chocolate. Smell? Can't smell. You smell it here. It does taste just like licorice as well when Aye. you just eat it. I have more knife questions. Are they ceramic oh, knives? Right. Are they ceramic knives? Good question. They are Kuhn Rikon Switzerland. We'll look that up and try and get back these guys. I'm not really sure. They are cool knives. My one criticism is that when you use a stick on them, it does take the colour off. So I imagine in a few years the blades will not be pink. Mm. So I don't know if I can pick it up if anybody knows about ceramic. Like, I just look, I just thought. Don't know, I'm not really in the light. Let's see. I can't, I don't really know. There we go. Don't know. Don't know. No. Let's find out. Saying all this stuff you usually throw away, never knew it was edible. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the only other ingredient that I've got here, and I mean, this is just really trying to encourage people, you know, to experiment. Um, as you can tell today, I'm not following the recipe down to a tea. Or anybody that has the box will know, not following the recipe down to a tea. Experiment, see what works. The weight force. It's a Henny's paste for rice, they're calling it. And to give you ingredients, it's garlic, lemongrass, shallots, ginger, sunflower oil, salt. So it's a lemony garlic, it's like minced garlic, and I like garlic, so we're going to add a teaspoon of that in as well. Okay, so talk you through a roux or the basics of a roux. So if you look up roux on the internet, it will probably tell you it's equal parts flour and fat in what a roux is used for is thickening a sauce. So for example, if you make cheesy pasta from scratch, it's going to be equal amounts of flour and butter. And when that cooks through in the pot, then you gradually add your wet ingredients, then you put it on a low heat, and it's a thickening agent. That's what a roux is and it's most basic form, but with a lot of curries what you'll find is there's some flour but the spice also acts as a dry ingredient together and then um, more often in curries than not you'll find oils being used so in Chinese cooking it tends to be rapeseed oils, sesame seed oils in Indian cooking we tend to use clarified butter but it's the same idea, getting your wet So we're just going to fry the garlic off first though, just to take the harshness out. <coughs> the 
smells good. No, it does. So again, guys, everything on a recipe is just guidelines. Encourage everybody to experiment, add in whatever you've got. If you've got questions, please ask. Right, so, stick the dry in now. See it form in your paste. It's really important to do this when you're making curries as well because if you just throw all your dry and lots of water on stock, you'll tend to find it will come out quite powdery. So this is what we refer to as cooking out the roux. Make sure that there's no lumps and just make sure that your product at the end is nice and smooth and all cooked out. So this is probably the part you don't want to rush too much. Oh, I can smell it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that does smell good. <laughs> How are we looking, guys? We good? Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, that's good. Obviously, keep the uh, don't leave it any sitting any longer than thirty seconds. Yeah. Keep it stirring, or it will stick and burn because it's got fat in it, so it'll burn. Okay, so we have stock here, just regular stock cubes dissolved in about a litre and a half of liquid. What Steve will show you doing is adding the stock in gradually as he stirs that. That's also important as well because if you add all the stock in at once, um, the oil and the dry could split. Um, it'll leave you a lumpy. It'll leave you lumps and stuff as well. So add the stock in gradually. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you can take pictures soon. I've taken a photograph of our board. Alright, oh, okay. So you'll probably see the first wee bit of what liquid that you put in will near enough disappear. That's completely normal. And you can add more, you add it in increments, you can add more and more as you go. That smells good. It's quite satisfying just to watch. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not doing any work, so it's quite nice, you know. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would, would do it, right? But see, see, maybe the consistency it was just before Stevie added the the last bit of liquid there. If you used what more dry ingredients, like loads and loads of curry powder, that's effectively how you'd make curry paste. So the curry paste that you buy for jars, you could do that actually. Uh, yes, we will post the recipe later once I figure out how. <laughs> um, Angela says hi, Johnny. Is that Angela here? Yep. 
And Susan says, well done, Johnny and Stevie. <laughs> does look really thick the now guys um, which is okay because by the time we put the coconut milk in it I'll loosen it so much It's a liquid. Yeah. Mary says watching this is making her hungry. It's <laughs> making me hungry. It smells so good. Well, go get your health ingredients, make it at home, please. How's that? Oh boy. Yes. So if your potatoes haven't been hard boiled, the green one hasn't, they're, they're completely raw. We really want to be getting these in now. What's the benefit of putting them in now rather than boiling them? Benefit-wise, um, sometimes I tend to find when I make these types of sauces, they can be a wee bit watery in the finished product. If they're cooked, if they're in raw, the potatoes are starchy. So that's just another wee thickening agent. It aids the mm. roux. But there's nothing wrong with hard boiling them. Also, I find if you if you hard boil them, see if you cook them just slightly too over. By the time they go into the sauce, by the time it actually gets out of the the table where you're eating it, the potato can be overcooked and then you end up with like mashed potato through your curry, which isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> just not but it's the, not the goal. No, it's not the goal. It's not the goal. Um, oh, got veg be going in. Yeah. So we'll give us a wee five minutes. Thank you, heat up a wee bit, give the potatoes a chance to cook. This is a sauce that you must stir regularly. Like, I wouldn't say you need to baby it exactly, but you know you're talking every every couple of minutes, kind of. If you can, I don't know if you'll be able to hear a sound. <laughs> that sound, that's when you know it's catching it wee bits and you've just got to keep stirring it. Leslie's looking forward to making it. Have to, um, if you make it, you could share a picture with us, that'd be good. Yes, that would be great. And we can see how everybody's looks slightly different and how that's great. Because who wants to do the same thing? Really? Yeah, you'll have to let us know how you've experimented with the recipe as well. Yeah, please. If you have, if anybody has like English mustard kicking around their houses, not really the you could use French or American, but more the English mustard, like Hellman's. A wee teaspoon of that goes really good in this type of curry as well. Mm. Um, Chinese use lots of mustard, mustard seeds and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just going to give us a taste now, just to put the nose what's happening. Right? Do you know what I've done my cup with? Ah. Because <laughs> it looks nice and empty. Yeah. There's usually cutlery over there. Right. It's 
good. <laughs> yeah. Is that an SJ Fulton that one? Yeah, it's probably an SJ Fulton that knocked down. Does it taste coconutty? No. You tend to find the coconut milk, if you cook it out any longer than five minutes, the coconut taste kind of goes away. You don't really get much coconut off of it. But I have probably for what we are working with, I wouldn't go any more than two tins. Or you start uh, you probably would start to taste it and it might make it a wee bit too white in colour. Smell like a clammer colour right now. Ah, it's went a wee bit maybe a clammer colour. Is it still nippy though? It's not nippy at all, it no, just no. it just tastes like curry. See it can be quite a good way if you're kinda like me and you like the flavour of the spice but you don't so much like the hotness of it. Um, coconut milk's a good way of kind of balancing, balancing it out, aye. But I mean, you know, it depends, you'll, you'll notice it as well, if you, if you get a Chinese, you order it, um, depending on what Chinese you go with, the colour will differ a lot, you know. But I mean, I've had Chinese curries that colour, then I've had Chinese col curries that were like brown. And again, it's just different people using different spices, different amounts of stuff. So we could probably get away with sticking the rest of the veg in. I've got everything there. It's going to be mega colourful. Oh, my dad's looking forward to me making this. Oh, I see how yeah, I yeah, see yeah. how it is. Also, Adrian, was it your mum that wanted a recipe for mushroom soup? Yes, it was. I swear I'm getting it to you, but it's going to be like a three-page essay <laughs> on, on all the different things that you can do. <laughs> oh, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Things to try. Um, assume you've all heard about marinated chicken. You can marinate the cauliflower and broccoli and stuff like that as well. Is that something that you could try using wee drops of oil and your spices? Which, if you've received a box, you'll have extra. So you could use that, mix it up with a wee bit of oil to make a marinade or a rub, and you could put that on your chicken. You could put it on your cauliflower. Um, assume you could do mushrooms again. Experiment. And write back and tell us. There we are. So whilst this is all cooking, Steve, are you in here like to add? No, I just want to eat this now. You just want to eat this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same, I'm absolutely starving. Oh, actually there is one now, hang on, I forgot this. Oh, oh yes. Okay. The thing from Waitrose. It's the only way I feel like you can say it. Waitrose. Never tried it in this before, so let me see what it's like. Uh, is it's, it's like minced garlic though. If anybody's ever had minced garlic in a jar, it's quite like that. It kind of made it darker, actually. Has it? Yeah, <laughs> it's going a bit dark. Wow. Mm. There you go. It does look great, the green. Mm -hmm. Looks great against the colour of it. Modern art. <laughs> and if anybody's wondering, I, it's, it's just like a Chinese curry when you eat it, your face is totally yellow. <laughs> It'll stain the up top yellow, but it's good for you. This is good for you, that's the difference. Um, to what I understand, the way that like the restaurants, Chinese restaurants will make it, is there is very little water and a, like, more oil than you would ever want to see in your food. Um, whereas you saw yourself, a lot of the liquid from this was made up of water and coconut milk and just a wee bit of oil and the rest that's all dry. Oh, well, Leslie wants to know what we just added there. Um, oh, yeah, so that is, the let's Waitrose see, paste. yes, Waitrose paste, which is unhelpful. Uh, so it's this here. Um, 
a jar of, what is that? Hennessy's. No. What it is, right? I think it's a play on words for like mayonnaise, isn't it? Is oh, it I not? see. Yeah, right. Like, okay. Whatever. It uh, is. yeah. So it's ingredients are in the book. So garlic, lemongrass, ginger, but it's mostly garlicky. Yeah, I think I'd we've say found. It's very, like I said, if anybody's ever had minced garlic, or if you go and see like the squeezy garlic from a tube or garlic in a jar. You'll know it's kind of. I don't want to say it's bitter, but it's like. It smells bitter. Does it? I haven't it actually smells, smelled it. Yeah, I'll I open the jar. Yeah, only get one hand. Can, and get Aiden to smell it. Uh, that's really weird. It smells like garlic, and then right afterwards it smells like lemon. Yeah. Which is odd. Chinese cooking tends to have a lot of lemongrass and garlic in it, so I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> Which Stevie's going to get Is it again? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Ooh, looks good. Smells good. Looks good. Tastes good. That's a whole trifecta. <laughs> Something that I would be quite interested in, um, if anybody's ever worked in a Chinese restaurant or knows anybody that's ever worked in a Chinese restaurant, if you would like to comment on what they use in their curries, I would be quite interested to know. Because um, obviously I've been trying to get it as close as I can, kind of imitate it almost, and I can as close as I can get it tasting like Chinese curry. You're, you're talking about how it's like, the sauce would die anything? That's a bit of cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, it was white. <laughs> that just shows you. Whoa. Don't want to get that on you. <laughs> or on your nice blue floor. Don't want it on your oh, nice blue God. floor. Yeah. I, w I won't get you to look around the floor and look for turmeric stains, but there is plenty. <laughs> At least one of those is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because I've been, of course, proven to not drop things in the kitchen. <laughs> so this was definitely a sensible choice. Sorry Sally isn't here for her usual yeah. fount of knowledge. I don't have no. that sort of ability to just talk about what, plants and food. What we can do is we can go over the information on the recipe that Sally wrote. Ah, okay. So we've got waste saving tips. Um, you can make this sauce in last, large, ba large batches um, without adding the chicken or the veg. And portion it. Um, freeze it, defrost it when required. So yeah, that's pretty much just me you know, like making the sauce. Probably without the chicken and the veg, you could put it in if you want, and then you can freeze it small batches and just defrost it either in a microwave or leave it out throughout the day and then eat it. Um, cauliflower greens are nutritious and great to eat. Um, give them a wash, chop them small as you like, add them towards the end usually. Um, green, green skins on potatoes, that's a really good one. Um, they're high in vitamins and eating them saves waste as well and if we're all honest it's easier. Did you add those broccoli leaves mm -hmm. as well, yeah? Yeah, I added They just go in with all the rest of the veg yeah, then? Yeah, they ended up here and again, we're not being too precious, like, we, you can, but, yeah, in general, probably the less long you cook a vegetable, the more vitamins you'll retain from it. It's the stuff that is really high in vitamins, such as the leaves of the broccoli, if you want to maintain that, probably put them in at the end. Mm -hmm. A wee bit of health information. Um, so, making your own delicious curries is much healthier than taking away our store bought alternatives, which are high in fats, salts, and preservatives. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I 
I just put myself on screen uh, again. Uh, <laughs> and it's better for your wallet too. Um, it wouldn't be too hard for anyone at home to go have a look, even taking into account that you're having to buy like you know a jar of spice. You work out cost. You work out how much this takes to make for four people. And I can guarantee you, if you try to buy that in Chinese food, this will be so much cheaper. And I think it tastes pretty close. So, um, yeah. In, in terms of health information, you know, just add lots of extra veg, um, fiber. Lots of people don't have enough fiber. Ah, uh, sorry. Massive. Wait, no. There we go. I briefly gave you a moustache. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it was bright. You've got a moustache, Johnny. Uh -huh. It'll be funny, won't it? Is that all one in Pilot Hines? Yeah, I Snapchat was. Hines? Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's funny. It's fine. It adds to the comedic value. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just don't get this with Sally's competence, you, really. You just don't. Uh, I brown rice. It's higher in fibre than white rice. Fibre is great for even digestion. It's a big problem in this part of the country. People have enough fibre in their diet, so you know, eat brown rice, brown pasta. Uh, they do taste slightly more different, but when you put a sauce on it, you're not really going to notice too much. They tend to take a wee bit longer to cook as well, but then you can argue that more durable, probably harder to overcook brown pasta and brown rice. Mary's saying she makes curry quite often and it's always different, but it tastes good every time. Exactly. I think that, I mean, see, see, see for everybody at home that's doing it, see, see if you have a recipe that you follow down to a key, it works every time, it comes out the same every time, good on you, that's fine. But I think for most people, see the effort required and trying to get it to look and taste and smell the same every time. And then when you consider when it looks different every time, as Mary's saying, that it's nice every time, is it really worth it? Following a recipe down to a key to make it look, taste, smell the same every time. In some circumstances, maybe it is, but for the home cook, I, I think it's much more exciting to, to wing it almost a wee bit. It's also a bit more um, sustainable food wise if you can just use what you have and you feel comfortable sort absolutely, of absolutely. putting if, in what you've got. If your recipe has something in it that's you know, seasonal in the sense that if, you're, if the season doesn't correspond, then buying a lot of, spending a lot of extra money, yeah it's much more sustainable to just what you can get. Can we think of other veg that would be nice in us? I can think green beans, peas, different types of mushrooms, um, some red onion, sweet corn is really nice in it. Um, sweet More sweet sort of root. Veg, like carrots and things with we'll bacon. Carrots, no, yeah, you can just, like, chop carrots up nice and small. Um, is that your mate over there? Right, my man. See you later. Bye. 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 Um, yeah. Mary always uses what she has available at the time. Yes. Brilliant. Uh, good way. I like your thinking there. Yeah. I'm not quite as comfortable with it yet, but I'm getting there. Aye, ah, well, I mean, it's a learning curve as well. Like, obviously, it means the area will be much more used to it because you're just made to taste everything out of the States, so you don't really get a choice if you like it or not, but <laughs> um, what other things we go into that? Uh, sweet potato, Stevie said, I absolutely see things like sweet potato, butternut squash, chickpeas and stuff like that. You could put them in a Chinese curry, they're probably traditionally more in Indian cooking. They'll use things like butternut squash and chickpeas. A lot of their cooking's veggie, so there's no meat involved at all. Oh, Mary suggested courgette. Absolutely, courgette. Courgette's a really good one. I love well courgette. Because for anybody that hasn't ever actually tasted a courgette, I don't think they taste so much. They taste of precisely nothing, really. Which is great because then they take, they take on the flavour of whatever mm -hmm. you cook in them. I've used them for cake, courgette cake, sort of oh. moistens it. I'm trying to remember what it substitutes, but I can't. <laughs> but it's it's it doesn't taste of anything, so no. it just makes it moist. I mean, I would imagine if, if 
if you're using for jet substitute something in a keg, I, I don't know, but I'm just taking a wild guess and say it's going to be a binding agent. Yeah. I don't think a jet would make something rise. I think no. It would, <laughs> it would bind, so it's probably in place of egg yolk. Probably. But, aye, that's, that's cool, man. Aye. What else do we have here? Um, right, did you know, this is a wee bit of environmental side of things. Um, buying your fresh ingredients like meats and vegetables from closer to home is better for the environment. Uh, distance that food travels from where it is produced to where it is consumed is known as food miles, and the more food miles that are produced, the more it blocks up, the more greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere um, through storage for transportation. So, what that kind of means is, you know, but for example, we get Scottish strawberries, and I always remember in here because we deal with surplus food waste, a lot of strawberries came in and they're grown in Egypt. So, to transport them to Egypt to here is going to cost so much transportation, they're going to have so many cars and vehicles producing so much gas, um, it makes a lot more sense to just eat strawberries when they're seasonal, when they're right at your doorstep, support the local farmers, support the local businesses as opposed to dragging through from the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. That is a bit silly, isn't it, really? Yeah. If you, and if Scotland doesn't have any strawberries, if they're not in season, maybe do without them. Eat something else for a year. <laughs> so. Hi, Julie. We're looking forward to seeing you too. Hi, Julie. Uh, Kirsty says courgette instead of oil. Is that what it is? The courgette mm. instead of the oil? Wow. So it's like a little low fat, like, yeah. cool. Aye. Yeah, pretty much. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. <laughs> Trying to catch Laura in the shop, but she's hating. <laughs> Ooh, fancy plates. Right, so we're just going to we cook rice. We're going to heat it up in the microwave. Just let me get a spoon for a second. Yes, please. Of the celebration. Yes, it very much was. Okay. <laughs> you can be the judge. Oh, I see. The guinea pig. The guinea pig, I Yes. Usually these. So ah, see, uh, is that because Sally wouldn't stand for this? I see. I see. <laughs> so, Adrian, you are a vegetarian. I am. What do you get from Chinese? Rice. Just rice? Yeah. Yeah. I I've got to be honest, Johnny. I like rice. Right, fair enough. Rice like is rice. good. Mm -hmm. Do you like rice? No, I was just going to see if you... So you've got nothing to compare this to. Ah, oh, I keep turning it around. I like to show you. I have had vegetable curry before, but not like out of the Chinese. Right. So, the turmeric that's in your Madras curry powder and the turmeric that we added talk about how it stains things. So if you're marinating meats in it and you intend to use your hands, please buy it by gloves and just watch our laptops and stuff because it won't stay. <laughs> it's so good for you. Keep it away from the kids. <laughs> Saying 170 calories in a kilo of courgettes. 
So there you go. Do we grow courgettes here? We have done, but we've not in a wee while, but uh, yeah, we did at one point, and Chris that works in his field, he was called yellow courgettes. We've never seen them. Interesting. Just a few things I forgot to mention as well is uh, ginger's good for, it's a good digestive aid, um, it's good for your stomachs and stuff like that, and turmeric is good for like heart disease, so there's a wee bit mm. Thank you. Hold on, Adrian, before you uh, do that. Okay. Oh yes, we were drying some parsley uh, up here. Yeah, it'll be warm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That is good. Is that right? <laughs> That's brilliant. They're so good. Nice. Quiet as shoes being all. <laughs> 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 Keep our heart. That is colourful. Nice. Yeah, that is very exciting. I think the next thing I'd want to try is like really, really thin. Sliced carrot. I think an orange colour for that would be good as well. Yeah. So there is a wee bit of salt in there, but it's more orange colour. Oh. Put time on, Stephen. How are we doing for time? I can't see a timer. None else popped up, just people saying size of them onions, but in a good way. Looks lovely. <laughs> guilt free curry. That's it, guilt free curry. Yep. That's it. Well, guys, thanks for joining us, and next week we will be doing cauliflower cheese, I believe. Don't quote me 100%. Because <laughs> I'm getting confused between what's going out as a recipe box and what we're doing as a live. Um, could be risotto, it'll be risotto or cauliflower cheese. But in next week. Hopefully Sally will be back. She's mm. my up already. So. Nice. But thanks again guys. Oh, Adrian did a good job. Come on. Well, Adrian's Wait. done a fantastic job. <laughs> that I hope Sally can be better. Oh, no, so thanks again guys. So it's goodbye from me. Adrian and Stevie flip that camera back on yourself. I'll just do that. Bye. <laughs>